With your latest news, I'm April Cummings. With your latest news, I'm April Cummings. We begin with the COVID-19 report. Three positives from the 385 COVID-19 results since our Tuesday report. There have been 79,344 COVID-19 vaccinations given in all in the islands. Of these, 42,790, that is 66 percent of the estimated population of 65,000, have had at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. 56 percent have completed the two-dose course. In last night's news, we mentioned the Ministry of Tourism's vaccine challenge event in Cayman Brac. A total of 84 people were vaccinated during that event on May 22nd. Second dose AstraZeneca vaccines, meantime, will be administered this Saturday, May 29th, at the Owen Roberts International Airport Vaccination Clinic. The hours are from 8 to 11 and 12.30 to 4 p.m. People who are due for their second dose on May 31st will be contacted directly by public health. When you arrive, be sure to let a member of public health staff know that you're there specifically to receive the AstraZeneca vaccine. Health officials say people who received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine overseas may not be guaranteed a second dose due to a very limited supply of this particular vaccine. Don't forget you'll need to wear a mask and bring photo ID. You can find out more information at hsa.ky. Just click on public health through to the coronavirus section. The 2021 census is coming. Radio Cayman's Felicia rankin Solens has more. His Honorable Excellency Governor Martin Roper and the Honorable Premier Wayne Panton join with the Economics and Statistics Office at the Marriott Beach Resort to launch Grand Cayman's 2021 Population and Housing Census. Adolphus Lidlow, Director of ESO. Well, we're beginning the launch of the um, public education campaign for Census 2021. So thereafter, we hope to go into the diff different aspects of the community to publicize the census more and to give more information about the census. Like, for example, we will go through the census questions. Um, we'll also, following that, recruit in a number of persons, up to about 500 persons or so. Then we'll go through extensive training. The last census was in 2010, so not only is it time for population numbers to be updated, but for an overall re-evaluation of the populace. We can also settle a lot of societal arguments as to what exactly is the number of person, you know, in the island, how many are Caymanians, how many are not Caymanians. So this information like this, we can settle those discussion and at the same time we can get the data such that we can plan for the future. Around 500 volunteers will be door-to-door -door with around 84 questions. Not all questions will apply to everyone. It, it will depend on your age, it depends on your sex, it will depend on whether you're head of household. So it varies based on the areas that you're looking at. But we're looking at demographics like you know, your age, um, your status, things of that nature, your religious denomination. We look at sections of um, for women between the ages of 16 and 49, fertility information, we look at marital status, we look at disability, health insurance, we look at some household characteristics also, we look at um, environmental issues. This year's census will also include for the first time questions on crime. For Radio Cayman News, I'm Felicia rankin Solens. The census begins on October 10th. Finding opportunity where there are challenges. That's the message from the tourism minister after spending time in Cayman Brac recently, where he met with staff in his departments and statutory authorities. I think Cayman Brac and the Brackers are embracing what opportunities have presented itself in respect to um, COVID-19 and the staycation concept. What the pandemic did was force many people in Grand Cayman to see what benefits Cayman Brac offer. The Honorable Kenneth Bryan toured the Cayman Islands Airports Authority, Cayman Airways, the Department of Tourism Satellite Office and the Port Authority. He told CIGTV he plans to visit the sister island regularly to help build a sustainable plan for future growth. The Deputy Premier continues meeting his new team members with a quick tour of the Department of Labor and Pensions, Customs and Border Control, and Workforce Opportunities and Residency Cayman. This week, the Honorable Chris Saunders will tour the remaining departments, including the Work Records Team at Cayman Center, Travel Cayman, and Customs and Border Control at the Post Offices and the Port. We're told a trip will soon be scheduled to visit Offreg and Work and CBC offices in Cayman Brac. Efforts are underway by the country's utilities regulator to put together a comprehensive assessment of the viability of a robust solar sector within the islands. Radio Cayman's Carsley Fuller reports.
A new request for proposals has been published by the Office of Utility and Regulation for a Cayman Islands Electricity Sector Comprehensive Value of Solar Study. The RFP opened on Monday seeks a consultant to conduct a comprehensive study that will independently assess and determine solar's full value to society at large. As increasing amounts of distributed generation are added to the grid, it has become necessary for OFREC to independently identify the tangible benefits and real costs that solar provides to the electricity system, in addition to the impacts to utilities and rate payers. Offering Executive Director Greg Anderson. The study is not restricted to a particular study, and the results of the study will be used to inform rates for distributed generation programs that the office plans to develop in the near future. You can find the full tender posted on government's Bonfire Hub website. The closing date is June 18th. Reporting for Radio Cayman News, I'm Carsley Fuller. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce is asking its membership to weigh in on public sector performance. Chamber President Mike Gibbs explains what the chamber is hoping to achieve with the survey that it is sending out to its membership. A lot of the questions and feedback that we get and commentary from our members relate to their dealings with various government departments, various statutory authorities. Mr. Gibbs tells Radio Cayman the goal is to collect the data from its 600 member companies and provide a summary of the feedback, positive or negative, to the appropriate entities. Hopefully there'll be a good degree of positive stuff in there, but maybe some constructive criticism that they can learn from and, and we can try and help you know, give the government the feedback so they know, especially with the new government, that these are the issues that are being faced or these are the good things that people are experiencing. How can we build on that and improve all the way around? So that's the, the onus of, of the, and, and the driving force behind the survey. Mr. Gibbs says sharing the perspective of the business community, from the micro business to major employers, is an important part of the chamber's mission and one even more essential as we navigate through the pandemic. We're not trying to be critical of, of government. We, we want to work together with them and, and to try and improve the overall service levels so that, the, the, you know, obviously the government departments, their customers are the general populace. Are they really giving the service that, that the populace need and at the level that they need? And, and then when we when the borders reopen and we've got, uh, you know, tourists coming through, that adds another whole spectrum to it. We want to do that, make sure that we're, we're up and running and, and everyone's working at the right level. If you are a chamber member, check your email for the 10-minute online survey. Individual responses are kept confidential. The National Trust for the Cayman Islands launches its first youth stewardship program. It's aimed at Caymanians 18 to 30, and the goal is to educate them on Cayman's history, culture, and environment, while inspiring them to do the same for the generation that follows them. The six-week-long program is being hosted in partnership with R3 Cayman Foundation and WORK. That is your latest local news from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. I'm April Cummings.